And we are live. Welcome to the SMT podcast. Been doing a lot of podcasting lately. I usually don't do this. Try not to do back to backs. But on a day like this, I think it calls for it. I think it's kind of a must. It's something we got to do. We got topics to discuss. Some of the topics have to do with today's news. Some of the topics have to do with the future of T-Mobile. The future of individuals involved in today's news as well. And the companies involved in the T-Mobile and Sprint merger, including Dish. Names that you will hear tonight include Charlie Ergen, John Leisure, Mike Sievert. Man, we got a lot to talk about. I mean, heavy news today. No surprises. Maybe the timing surprises you. I don't know. But the news probably shouldn't. But that's kind of what I'm thinking. So. I'm thinking not a surprise that the news of what the announcement was, but uh, I think timing possibly surprised some. So before we get started with today's video, of course, I am broadcasting a little bit early tonight. I'm sure some, some people will be watching this on the replay. Big shout out to the replay crew if you are watching this on replay. Appreciate you guys being here in the live as well. Thank you for stopping by tonight. Do say hello to the SMT and do like the video on, on your way in. All right, sweet. Pete's in the house. He'll be moderating tonight, hopefully. Casey, good to have you on. Glad you can make it tonight. Aaron, good to have you on. Cash Games in the house. Carlos, also moderating tonight. Thanks for being here, brother. Appreciate you. Chopping onions, Pete. Really? We got all this news to talk about and you're chopping onions, man. Is that that's what's going on in the streets right now? Sparks. <laughs> Good to have you on. Yeah, that's my little intro, right? We are live. I wonder, William, if he does that slow cooker stuff. <laughs> but tech for all, he hasn't left yet. And he's not leaving like immediately. Uh, near future. But, you know, we still do have some time with John. He'll still be around. And, of course, he's still going to be with the company. We'll talk about what his role will be and how it'll be different. MT Houston, Texas, good to have you on. John is T-Mobile. Can't argue with you there. Slaw, good to have you on. All the charisma. He definitely has that. Gregory, good to have you on. Little boy, AK Big Chungus. Good to have you on. <clears throat> He's going to continue to do slow cooker. <laughs> That's funny. T-Mobile is losing a legend at the top. James, I agree. I don't think anybody's ever left an imprint on wireless telecom like John. I can't think of anybody, honestly. I can't think of any name. I know that, I know, you know, I know who Randall Stevenson is. He's, you know, the CEO of AT&T. I know Hans Vestberg, the CEO of Verizon. Probably the only reason I know them is because of the channel, though. A lot of people know who John Leisure is don't really know anything about wireless technologies and the wireless providers. They just know John. Uh, I think he spoke to a lot of people in some ways. And there's a lot of good out of what he's done for a lot of different people. What's up, K-Melly? Good to have you on. Glad you can make it tonight. <laughs> Wouldn't that be crazy? I know a lot of people are, they joke and they speculate about that. But, you know, that's just extremely unrealistic. And I, I really would hope that it would never happen, actually. 
It's really, really fast. Cash games. I've been so I just got ATT on a prepaid carrier and I'm getting speeds like 160 megs per second and 180 and 150. It's holy crap fast. So I I concur it is a fast and high capacity network. What's up, Nerds? Craig, what's happening? How is he the face and voice of the merger, but not be CEO anymore? It's crazy. We need a petition to get him back. Okay, Craig. So John has done a lot of great things. John is obviously, he's those things that you said. He's the voice of the merger. He's the face of the franchise. Petition to get him back? I I mean, what's that going to accomplish? To Petition what? What do you, He hired Mike Seaver in 2012 to be what John needed him to be, which was going to be a successor. If you oppose Mike Seaver being the new CEO, then you oppose John's decision to step down. That's pretty rare, Gregory. <laughs> There's not many places across the U.S. getting that fast with Sprint. It's good to see, though. Is it true that a CEO can only hold that title for a certain amount of time? Uh, not that I know of. I've never heard of that before. You know what, KMLE, I take that back. It's possible company to company, it could be different. Maybe certain companies have that type of stipulation in the contracts. I don't know. It's possible, but I, I haven't heard that about T-Mobile. I haven't, I can't say that I've heard about many companies, actually. So, not from what I know. All right, so we got 23 in the live. I want to thank you guys for being here tonight. 27. Looks like everybody's starting to pile in. People getting off of work. I know it's a little bit early on the West Coast, and not everybody's probably available at this time. Matt Dub, I want to thank you for your super chat, your PayPal donation. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. You know what, KML? I think that's part of it. I agree with you. I think, I think it's a timing thing. I think it's it's going to work for both parties, and I'll explain my stance on that tonight. Yeah, Jose, I agree with you. I think you're right about that. Yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of people in panic mode. They think like things are going to get awful and horrible and T-Mobile is going to turn into this junk garbage, you know, anti-John company. I don't think they go anti-John, but I do think some things will change. Shouldn't affect the merger. I don't think so. I mean, it, it, there's some optics to it. Don't get me wrong. I think timing's a little sensitive. But if they can prove that John was was going regardless of the merger like if if that can be expressed explicitly then it shouldn't make a difference and his contract expires in april thanks bro appreciate it matt dub john the reason i'm with t-mobile i had shoddy service with Verizon, but when john became ceo of t-mobile my family was sick of crap carriers made t-mobile household name yeah he did that for a lot of people all right guys so here's what i'm going to do I will not be going into the live chat for a couple of minutes. I'm going to explain the full announcement from today, all the details. So, you know, I'm not going to be put, posting anybody's messages. I'm not going to be clicking on anything. I won't be addressing any comments. You guys are more than welcome to chat. Please, by all means, do that. But until I'm done, I won't be going into the live chat. So that's on you guys. Of course, the live chat is there for you guys. Have the discussions, you know, talk about the topics. But for anybody who is not really privy to the details of today's news, that's who I'm doing this for. So 41 in the live. You guys are here on the SMT podcast. Let me go through all of the details from today's news out of T-Mobile. All right. So let me start this by saying this first. John stepping down <clears throat> as the T-Mobile CEO should not be a surprise to anyone. You might say that you might be surprised in the timing. You may have thought to do this after the merger, once the merger is cleared, once the integration of the networks is done. That doesn't look good either. So the timing is as good as it's going to get. If John was to wait and step down as CEO in April, right at the time where his contract expires, people would say, you know, he's a hit and run guy. Right, And that's what he didn't want. He needs to make this look and appear as if it was planned and had been planned for a long time, which from what I understand, that's the case. That appears to be the situation. 
Talks have been heating up for several months. We caught wind of this actually last year in 2018 of John leaving the company, not on a bad note, not for another company, but stepping down as a CEO in the form of CEO retirement, we'll call it. So this has been going on. These talks, these negotiations, these arrangements, you know, the whole thing of Mike Sievert becoming the next CEO, his successor, is completely predictable. This is what we're expecting. I'm not any type of wireless profit. <laughs> I'm not a wireless carrier profit. This was not a prophecy. It just makes sense. To me, it all fell into place. John built up a wireless provider, a viable provider, that was going to make a company strong and legitimate as a carrier to compete with Verizon and AT&T, shake up the industry, do something that nobody's ever done. And once he felt like he accomplished his goal, he was going to walk away. So as of April 31st, when John's contract expires, it will not be renewed. John Leisure will step down as CEO of T-Mobile, and he will pass the baton to Mike Sievert, who he hired back in 2012. Mike Sievert's first official day will be May 1st, 2020. He will continue to be the president of the company, which he currently is today and has been. He will also take on the title of CEO, which he was previously the COO. John will assume a position as a member on the board of directors with T-Mobile. He is free to work elsewhere if he so chooses. John stepping down appears to be a completely you know, mutual thing between him and, and T-Mobile. It appears to be planned. It appears to be calculated. Mike Sievert has been the protege. He has been John's right hand. He is the successor as the CEO. The merger, and this is important. I hope everybody hears this clearly. The merger, whether it is completed or it is blocked, John is done as CEO of T-Mobile as of April 31st, 2020. So even if the merger is to be blocked for whatever reason or held up or modified or changed, it doesn't matter. If it prolongs into 2021, John's done in April. He's done. Relation with T-Mobile. Don't go any longer. Let's talk a little bit about John. A little bit of history. John came to the company in September of 2012. He has served over seven years as the CEO of this company. John is regarded as a modern leader. He is a legend in terms of CEO accomplishments. Among CEOs, he's at the top of the hierarchy. He's transformative, transcendental. He's a game changer. He's a market setter. He's a trendsetter. John is loud. John is flamboyant. He's visible. He's a walking advertisement. He's a mascot. And he's a genius. He's disruptive. Everything he touches has turned to gold. He's all of those things. He's a little rambunctious at times. He's loud. He's wacky. He's everything. He's all of that. He's... He's John. Mike Sievert, on the other hand, his successor, his protege, his understudy, some would say. I don't see him as an understudy. I see him more as a peer. But this dude is solid when it comes to business sense. John has said time and time again, maybe it's to toot his own horn, like, hey, I hired this brilliant man. But from what I understand internally, T-Mobile is thrilled to have a successor like Mike Sievert. Intelligent, very bright, a master of business, extremely well-trained, prepared specifically for this job, hired by John in 2012, mentored by John since his hire, highly experienced. He's been in the game with this company for seven years. I don't think anybody knows T-Mobile better than Mike, except maybe John. He's been highly involved with the merger. 
He knows what the company needs to do to be positioned for success moving forward post-merger. So whether or not the merger gets blocked or it gets approved and well, it's been approved, but as long as it doesn't get held up in any way, shape or form, it doesn't matter. John is stepping down as the CEO. Mike Sievert is his successor. I want to give you guys some perspective. I'm probably going to do a history of John Ledger. Seriously. I think it. I've done the history of Verizon. I've done the history of Sprint. I've done the history of AT&T. John is the only CEO of any wireless provider I would ever consider doing a history of video. But I think it's deserving if you think about it. John, man, what he's done. John is magenta. John is the uncarrier. The uncarrier is not a company. It's John. Mike is the new T-Mobile. Mike is the next phase of the company. Two totally different things. Can the principles be similar? Sure. Will the uncarrier be gone? Probably. Can they be disruptive in terms of customer care and other things? Sure. But the new company will be different. I want to take you guys back to quarter one of 2013. A little bit of history. That's right around the time that John took over. He took over in like September of 2012. His first full quarter, so starting in 2013. In quarter one of 2013, they had 34 million subscribers. In quarter two of 2013, they had 44 million. That 10 million addition is clearly the Metro PCS acquisition. Merger, we'll call it. In quarter three, of 2019, this quarter that just passed, 84 million subscribers. While John has been CEO of T-Mobile, they have added 50 million subscribers. Let's put that in per into perspective. T-Mobile, under John Ledger, has added 50 million subs. There have been 16 uncarrier moves. John has single-handedly eliminated contracts not just from T-Mobile plans, customers, but he also did the same for the wireless market. John has single-handedly been responsible for bringing back unlimited data, regardless of how you feel about its limitations, 480p video and other things, but it's because of him. John is revolutionizing and responsible for the disruption of TV. He's going to bring T-Vision. That's his idea. That's Partly his baby. Home broadband is him. Offering rural Americans and low-income consumers options. The focus on customer care. It's all him. It's everything is him. He's done all this as the underdog. He's been transparent. He's been relatable. He's been a people person. He makes connections with people that work for him, that work with him, his customers. He has a presence. Everything that most other CEOs are, he is not. But he still has chops. It's too early to say what exactly Mike Sievert's going to do. But he got to witness firsthand how it's done successful. So they were the underdog. John was the architect of the whole come up of T-Mobile. Deutsche Telekom is on a mission to be a very successful company that probably is okay moving on from John because they need to be something different now. Mike Sievert's probably not going to be loud. He's not going to be doing slow cooker Sundays. John's, you know, obviously, you know, he's just different. Mike Sievert's more mature. You know, he's not as boisterous. It's not as loud. But you have to give John his due. What he did for the wireless market stretches beyond T-Mobile. It goes to, I'm a, I've been a Verizon customer for years. I was an Altel customer before that. The only reason I have Unlimited is because of John. I just got a T-Mobile line a few months ago, a couple months ago. And... It's because of John. In February of 2017, Verizon brought back unlimited data. It's because of John. Verizon saw the customer churn rate was up a little bit, and they saw a lot of customers going to T-Mobile. 
T-Mobile's network was catching up. They were becoming competitive. There you go. They had to respond. Verizon is starting to give people different features. Free Disney Plus for a year. That's because of John. Because of Netflix on us. Verizon had to raise the deprioritization on some of its plans to respond to T-Mobile. John sparked and promoted competition in wireless because he knew at the end of the day he was willing and able with the support of Deutsche Telekom. He was able to make that competition a breeding grounds, a farm for competition. AT&T wanted no parts of it. They just had to respond. Verizon wanted no parts of it, but they had to respond. Sprint couldn't respond and ended up, hey, if you can't beat them, join them. Because that's what we're seeing with the merger. That's what John did. I just think John is moving on, and I think Deutsche Telekom and T-Mobile is moving on because they're at the fork in the road. It's an impasse. T-Mobile can't be what John wants it to be. And John knows it. John probably would have had several more good years in him. But I think he understands if he continues as the CEO of this T-Mobile, he won't be able to be who he has been with them. So, and all that, I think, is all pretty universal. I don't think there's anybody out there that's going to argue any of the points or the you know, the ideas that I presented to you just now in my monologue. So that's where we're at. And I open up the discussion to you guys in the live chat. Love to hear your thoughts and opinions on any of the things that I've mentioned. Maybe there's stuff that I've looked past. Maybe there's things that you think are a bigger deal. Maybe I downplayed it. Maybe I didn't mention it. You know, do let me know in the live chat what you guys want to add or discuss. And, um, you know, that's, that's John. John is, John is success. John is fun. John is loud. John is nuts. <laughs> John is relatable. John is immature. John is successful. He's all those things. He's silly. He's goofy. He's Twitter. He's Facebook. He's responsive. He's customer centered. He's all those things he's everything i can't think of anything he's not when it comes to superlatives and descriptions and adjectives i hear a lot of people say things like what if he was hired as a ceo of another company i mean people joke but it's i mean it's not legit he could never go to another company it doesn't even make sense <laughs> but uh it's funny to joke about it i guess Will T-Mobile work in hospitals and doctor offices without using Wi-Fi calling? Uh, I mean, that's going to actually come with a lot more of the, you know, 600 megahertz upgrades, Darion. So, Kim Ellie says, no one can dispute John's impact. I met him once. It's hard to miss. Six foot plus frame draped in pink. <laughs> yeah, and... The thing about it, came Ellie, it can't be fake. He's been doing this for years. It's realistic as to who he is. In fact, if he if he can't be that moving forward, then he probably wants out. He can't be who he is. What's up, Scott? Good to have you on. Yep. The more 600 megahertz can get rolled out, the better the coverage gets indoors, especially in buildings like, you know, hospitals and, and stuff like that in schools. Heavy duty structures. You got it, buddy. Cinematic Universe News. No cell phone carrier has the guts to offer unlimited hotspot, only visible. I mean, ATT does it. There's plenty of ATT sub carriers, MVNOs, and prepaid, you know, where they offer unlimited LTE hotspot. It's capped. You're getting five megs per second. You get deprioed. You know, you get throttled and stuff, but it's unlimited. So, John finally walking away from the company that he infamously and famously put on the map. Because T-Mobile is nothing before him. 
I think it was a combination of the network, some money, some investment, and his vision that really put it together. Jesse, speaking of, of John, there's John right there with Jesse in the picture. That's pretty cool. You got it, Darion. Yeah, cash games. There's tons of carriers that have unlimited, but I mean, it's I mean, there's limitations, but it is technically unlimited. With an asterisk. That's right, KMLE. True that. Gregory says, as long as T-Mobile stays at the forefront of tech, they will be all right. I think it's more about the investment. I mean, so yeah, it involves technology, but you got to spend. The one thing that kept T-Mobile behind for so many years and behind an LTE was the fact that they couldn't spend what Verizon was spending. Verizon has been spending over $10 billion annually for decades like two, three decades. <laughs> and then they've kicked it up even higher over the course of the last few years, moving towards 5G. And same thing with AT&T. at and spending over $20 billion last year and this year. Their spending is going to slow down a bit, but they've dumped billions into their network. T-Mobile used to have this faded pink color before, John. So now it's what, vibrant and, and bright? I don't even know what car color tunes are. Uh, Cinematic Universe News. Pete's on. He's on a business line. Business lines. He's got a business account. The offerings that T-Mobile gives business is a little bit different than than personal or, you know, regular consumer. Who's got service in a basement in a hospital, right? And there's uncapped, only catches lowest priority. All hotspot on AT&T is the lowest, but AT&T doesn't get... I agree, Cash Games. All of my experience thus far on AT&T prepaid, excellent. So fast. It's as fast or faster than Verizon postpaid. Seriously, I'm not even exaggerating. Osnot, you got the Undertaker right there. <laughs> I wonder what compelled John to really become the face of T-Mobile because if you Google him before he joined, he was suited up, deceptively sinister looking. He was an executive for AT&T. I forget his position. It was like international relations, I don't know, business something. Uh, and then after that, I know he was, he may have been CEO of Dell. But I mean, he's got, he's got a pedigree of CEO success, so... Color tunes are five dollars a month when you ring. Oh, okay. John did exactly what the color came up with magenta. AT and T and Verizon's network is huge but not consistent. Gregory, I have to disagree. Probably the most consistent network I've experienced over the last decade has been Verizon. Based on my early testing with AT and T, it's even faster than Verizon in most places. It's it's pretty crazy. I think AT&T's network spending has really just accelerated their growth. I think they're doing amazing things. I don't know if they've got the same LT availability as Verizon, but the speeds are definitely up there. Verizon has been the slowest for me. Averages under... What? I've never seen speeds that slow cash games. Most of the time I see Verizon 40, 50 megs on the low end. I mean, I see it over 100 quite frequently. So I'm surprised it's that bad, honestly. Colorful and out there. Yeah, that's he's definitely that, K. Millie. Ronald, you're late. <laughs> Glad you could make it, though. Sparks, that's my experience with Verizon also. Mr. OZ, what up? Ronald, good to have you on. I can't justify the price. <sighs> All right, one last thing to note, and since we're almost approaching that 30-minute mark, I'll be right with you guys in the live. One last thing to note. There is merger news. This came out today. Charlie Ergen, who is the Dish Network president, he's the guy you need to know when it comes to Dish Network. 
He will be present at the T-Mobile and Sprint merger trial on December 9th. He will be treated as a star witness. He will have to testify. He, they're going to ask him some questions. They're going to be poking and prying this guy, trying to get all the answers they want and all the answers they need. The first thing that they're probably going to be asking him is, Charlie, how committed are you and Dish Network, for that matter, as a fourth national wireless provider? You've got to convince us that you are in it for the long term to provide a viable and effective fourth competitor as a national provider. This has been one of my fears for the last several months. I have said time and time again, if you guys watch my five reasons that that Dish will fail as the fourth national wireless provider, you'll see all of my reservations about Dish. That's one of them. Is he is it is he in it for the long term or is he just a means to an end and then he can get out after a few years? They're going to want to know that. Because they're handing over a fourth carrier to him, to Dish Network, with a failed satellite business, and they're just going to pop into a cutthroat, vicious, cold-blooded business like Wireless Telecom, where really the only new provider to ever really succeed was John Leisure at T-Mobile. Something else they're probably going to want to know, are you going to provide a legitimate choice to consumers? Are you going to provide a 5G network that is going to be worth a damn, that people will be interested in and want? So our U.S. consumer is going to be happy and consider DISH a national option for 5G and LTE wireless. Keep in mind, the merger has no backup plan. No matter what you think about T-Mobile, Sprint, or DISH, there is no backup plan. The only company that has a backup plan is really T-Mobile. Sprint's done. Without this merger, Sprint, I mean, just look at their numbers. Look at the lack of investment into the network. Look at their debt. T-Mobile could back out of this. Worst comes to worst. Sprint could back out of this. Worst comes to worst, but things will not get better for them. Dish could also back out of this. Again. They're like Sprint. There's no future. There's no investment. They've got Spectrum. But what are they doing with it? Do you auction it off? Do you sell it? Do you look for a buyout? Do you look for a partner? A partner makes sense for Dish. A partner makes sense for Sprint. That's what they're trying to do. But there is no backup plan. We do want options. We do need options. Is Dish going to be an option? I'm actually okay with Dish selling in three years. Get him out of here. Get a big money spender. I don't care who it is. Maybe it's a couple of partners. I don't know. But I do want a legit competitor. Boost Mobile wants Sprint for $2 billion bucks. Gregory, what are you talking about? Tectuan B got himself some Verizon service today. See, I have both too, Tectuan. I like both. I got a feeling I'm not believing like T-Mobile can buy a dish network. Mm, That's not going to happen. That would be antitrust. Do you think T-Mobile will be better than Verizon and AT&T when the merger happens? It puts them in striking distance. When you say better, I'm not really sure what you mean by better. They'll have more market share. They'll be the combined of two companies. So, yes, DJ, uh, Luna Star, Boost will have five G. Uh, the trial that'll be December 9th. I got to be honest with you, Gregory, Boost Mobile is going to Dish Network. I'm not really sure, you know, what you mean. Dish Network is is buying Boost, as well as some of the Spectrum, the 800 megahertz or 850. 
whatever band 25 is, I think. <laughs> Carlos says if merger fails, Sprint will go bankrupt unless Dish buys or if SoftBank starts opening. I think SoftBank's done investing in Sprint. They've been awful. Sub Nino Beats. Good to have you on. Peter Adderton wants to buy Boost because of the agreement. Yeah. I, I'm okay with Peter Adderton getting his old founded company back and running the show with Boost. I'm perfectly fine with that. I don't know. I feel like he's more representative of serving a segment of consumer that needs more options. And he's probably not greedy like Charlie Ergen is. I mean, Charlie Ergen is cutthroat. I'm sure Peter Adderton wants to be rich, right? Everybody wants to make money. Nobody tells people not to make money. But when your greed gets in the way of the needs of the people, then you're that's that's bad in my book. When Boost Mobile will have 5G in Metro Detroit area? I'm not sure when they're exactly going to have it. Honestly, DJ Luna Star, the merger's got to complete. And then, you know, Dish has to build out the network. So it may not be till 2021, 2022. Who knows? Maybe 2023. And you got to assume that they'll put it in the bigger cities first. Not that Detroit isn't a big city, but, you know, you got to keep in mind there's Chicago and New York, and there's places that need to be served because they have a higher population of people. They definitely will, Darian. December 9th might be on C-SPAN 3 instead of books or YouTube, but not anywhere solid. Dish is buying Boost? Yeah, KMLE. KMLE, I know you're kind of new to the channel, but like there has been so much that has happened over the course of the last two months, five months, six merger. It goes back to April of 2018. Isn't that crazy? Ban 26, my bad. <laughs> if the sprint band 26, that's going to dish. Digital agreement. Yep. And the shame, they didn't really have a bidding process. It was really, it was like, it seemed like it was handpicked by Deutsche Telekom and T-Mobile. You know, maybe Peter should have been in on that bidding. It's a Hey, Deuce. What's up, bro? So the thing, uh, DJ Lunastar, about your LG Stylo is it's not a 5G phone. So, you know, you'd be upgrading to a 5G phone if you wanted access to a 5G, ne 5G network. Uh, most, most devices out now, people don't have 5G accessibility. Uh, that'll be, be something any feature that a lot of people will be adding over the course of the next few years. Yeah, I mean he's he would love to get in on that, Gregory. Would love to get in on that. Yeah, I think a lot of people, Tech Twan, they're probably feeling the same way. You know, they they see John as the representative face of the franchise. They know he is magenta. He is the young carrier, and uh, and they know that it'll be it'll be different. <clears throat> yeah, there'll be two five G phones coming out from T Mobile. C Solbasani, Colbasani. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Uh, yeah, there'll be a couple. Hopefully the audio is kind of fixing up here. I think it sh should be better now. Audio is choppy. Uh, hopefully it gets better. Yeah, band 26. That's what they're getting out of it. Yeah, I don't think it's you, Ronald. I think it's just StreamYard. Band 14 only for first responders and business. No, band 14 is available to all. It's just got core you know, regulations where it, it prioritizes based on the needs of the first responders. Uh oh, audio is okay. Is the audio better? Maybe somebody knows. Yeah, I agree, Aaron. Very excited about the C band, the CBRS 
Spectrum in uh, in June of 2020. Actually, Mr. OZ, your 5G Note 10 Plus, unless, yeah, because you probably have the unlocked Verizon model. That's a millimeter wave phone. It won't work except on millimeter wave 5G. So I'm not sure how much you'll be able to access. How come the U.S. doesn't use band 7 or 20? Canada uses them in their LT. It's over. I mean, it, it depends on the spectrum that they put on those bands, you know? You know, this is this is what's crazy. If you guys take a look at DJ Luna Star's comment, I heard the LG style of five phone will get a software updated to 5G. I can't believe customer care says that type of crap. Do you, DJ Luna Star, the typical 5G phone costs thirteen hundred dollars. I can't believe they tried to tell you that. That's crazy. Audio's good. All right, cool. One plus seven T Pro 5G coming to T Mobile. Yep, uh, that would be, but it's a McLaren edition. I'm not sure what the cost is going to be, Tech Tuan, but that'll be um, that'll be December 6th. See you, Pete. Thanks for being here. All right, Sean, we're good. Audio is better. Okay. I can't believe they said that to you. That's such ridiculousness. Let me tell you this, DJ Luna Star. I haven't seen you on my live stream before. It's good to have you. I highly recommend you stick around on the channel. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and you know hit the notification bell so you never miss whenever I go live or I upload a video. There's a lot to know that the wireless carriers don't provide accurate information to consumers because they just want your business. And even if they're they're willing to lie through their teeth to make themselves look better and to make you stick with them, even if it means they have to lie. And that is a total lie. There's no version of a, any stylo that's 5G compatible. There's probably five, six, maybe seven phones that are 5G compatible as of right now that you can get in the United States. So then the LG Style 5 is not one of them. It's a good phone. It's a nice mid-level, you know, mid-ranger, but there's no real mid-range 5G phone. Everything's like $800, $900, $1,000, $1,300, dollars I think, Darion, if Qualcomm can provide the chips, it looks like the next 2020 October release or whatever, September release, looks like those iPhones, we'll call it the iPhone 12 maybe, they'll be 5G compatible. Black Knight. Exactly. 5G requires 5G antennas and 5G modems, which very few phones have in today's market. Well, it's good to have you on, DJ Luna Star, and, and thanks for stopping by, and I appreciate you commenting. I think the new Motorola Razor is 5G. It's not, Mr. OZ. That's what's crazy. 1500 bucks, and it's not even future-proof. Ah, oh, thanks, DJ Luna Star. Appreciate that. I'm the fave. Fantastic. <laughs> Better for 1500 It's not, though. That's what sucks. How much do 5G radios cost in general from part breakdown perspective for the most part check the tech from what i'm seeing if you take a look at like say for example the note 10 plus if you buy a samsung galaxy note 10 plus you're paying about 1100 bucks if you get the 5g variant they're charging about 1300 so it looks like the 5g add-on to have the compatible modems and radios you know for compatibility on 5g it looks like it's slapping on an extra couple hundred bucks. I don't know what it does to the bill of materials. I'm assuming that it's going to be a situation where just a hundred to two hundred dollars more, and in some cases three hundred. I don't know what this McLaren edition phone is going to be. You know, um, we'll see. James says, "Will T-Mobile plans stay the same or go up without John at the helm? They're going to go up with or without John." And actually, that's probably why John is leaving is he knows that the whole adage of price is not going up. Maybe it's true. Maybe T-Mobile follows through and doesn't raise prices for three years. But after those three years, pricing is going to go up because they're investing billions. What company do you know will invest 50 or $60 billion on a network 
and not raise pricing. You know? Oh, I'm not sure, Black Knight. I'll have to check into that. That's kind of interesting. I haven't heard of the Star Wars edition, so I'll have to check into that and let you know. Video explaining how towers band spectrum all work to our phones. We learned some. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, Sean, I, I still have like two more videos that I have to get to. There are from the T-Mobile and Sprint merger, and the more updates we get from John and Sprint, like it, it sets me back because I want to make more videos, but man, it's it's really hard. Like I, I got a master's class that I'm taking. I'm a school teacher got the family life like i try to make myself available sometimes i feel like i'm running myself thin but i'm going to try to get to that video pretty soon uh we got thanksgiving break coming up we've got christmas break coming up i'm hoping to get to it no later than december new folks joining every live stream yeah the the community is growing for sure do you think 5g at t-mobile is going to be high cost initially it's no cost really boost mobile's boost up program I'm not familiar with the program, honestly, DJ. That's a good question. You know, like three years from now, how much would they raise pricing? I don't know. 5%, 10%. I don't know. It's hard to speculate on that. It's unprecedented. We've never seen 5G before. Verizon's adding $10 to the cost to get 5G access. AT&T is probably going to charge more because that's just what they do. Um, for, you know, Sprint's got a separate plan entirely. It's not even an add-on. Boost up. I don't. I don't know much about the program, honestly, DJ. I'll. I'll. I'll look into. I'm. I'm curious because I. I don't know. Is that for phone upgrades or something? Is that what it is? I'm very excited. Cinematic Universe news. Very excited about December sixth. My birthday is December seventh. So obviously it's like a two day extravaganza for me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll try to get to it, Sean. I want to get to it. I mean, I that sounds like an awesome video to do. Twenty by twenty carrier aggregation? Is that what that is? <laughs> or are you talking about like like spectrum concentrations on certain channels i mean that <laughs> i'm trying to think have i ever been connected to a network when it's got 20 megahertz of concentration of spectrum and i mean that's going to be fast <laughs> like i was looking at my connection on my samsung galaxy s10 e uh s10 plus the other night and i was on at&t's network and i had like 15 megahertz concentration of band 12 and like five or 10 megahertz of band 14. And it was really, really fast. Uh, you know, when the note 10 plus for 5g will be for sale, uh, December 6th, like, uh, the T-Mobile one birthday is December 14th. All right. So we're not even too far. Yeah, that's, it's, it's a fast, fast spectrum allocation that's that's tons eric what up bruh easy computer solutions big shout out to my brother easy right there y'all check out the channel easy computer solutions got a he's a very 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 hard working creator that makes excellent content i'm a big fan good dude check him out good to have you here easy glad you could stop by my brother easy who's your uh who's your wireless provider who you got? Verizon, Sprint, AT&T, T-Mobile. Who you got? Uh, Carlos? Uh, yeah, I've been trying to get Carlos to come on for a while. So, Carlos, do me a favor. Uh, Carlos, are you on? Are you on the Discord, Carlos? I I wasn't sure if you were. I remember I was trying to reach out to you a while back. Uh, if you're on the discord, I could always DM you or if you're on Twitter, I could always DM you and I can get you that link. Yeah. So I, if there's a way we can, um, either. Yeah. So 
<laughs> hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Uh, easy. Yeah, you got it, bro. T-Mobile Sprint AT&T. So easy. Did you hear about John stepping down as CEO from T-Mobile? I That was kind of big news today. Uh, I'm trying to think like, so Carlos, if you're on the, if you're on Twitter, I can hit you up in the DM. Otherwise we got to figure out another way. <laughs> oh, I know. I know what I could do, Carlos. I'll send you the link by email. That's what I'll do. I'll send you the link by email. All right. Here's what I'll do, Carlos. Check your email coming to you now. All right, Carlos, just sent you the email. Uh, that email will have a link to the StreamYard. Uh, let me know when you're in there. Looks like Carlos might be joining us. So I will be ready with my headphones. Hold on a second, y'all. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty fast. Uh, Boost Mobile. Okay. Wait, where am I at here? Oh, there we go. Steven, what's up, buddy? Good to have you on. He is my cousin, John. <laughs> my audio good now? No sound. How's that? I don't know what just happened, but I think because I plugged in my headphones, maybe. All right, we should be good. Let me know if my sound is good. You guys can hear me. Uh, why leave in after changing so much recently? It's a good question, Jessica. I think it's just timing. I think this has been in the works. I think John has had a, a plan to exit the company for a while. So I don't know. I think... I think John's in a situation where he's done what he needs to do. He doesn't want to compromise his reputation. I think T-Mobile is going to be changing a little bit. Their identity is going to be different. They're not going to be an underdog. All right, Carlos is going to be in the house. Carlos, you ready? Give me the sign. All right, good. We good? How's it going? Carlos. How's it sound? Can this, you hear me? Let's see if this works out. Hold on, let me put headphones on. I don't got like a whole professional setup, but bro, I don't have anything professional really. It's just a mic <laughs> and some headphones, man. Yeah, it works. Carlos, Carlos, it's good to have you on, man. Thanks for stopping by tonight, taking the invite. Yeah, no problem, man. Thank you for having. All right, so Carlos, works. tell tell me a little bit about yourself, man. Who are who's your provider, your wireless provider? Well, I got all of them: Verizon, Sprint, AT and T, and T Mobile. Who's your favorite? Carry. That's yeah. a tough one. That's a tough one. I, I mean, I drive a lot, so Verizon. I, I depend on them a lot, but T-Mobile, very good second option. Very good second option. They're now, Carlos, are you on Wi-Fi or are you on LTE? Uh, right now, I'm on T. Okay, there's a lag, but it might be. Are you Bluetoothing right now? Yes. Okay, that lag is because you're on Bluetooth. If you have wired headphones, it might be better. All right, hold on a second. So I'm right now, like right now, you're you're what you're doing and what your sound is isn't in sync. So I'm gonna, I'll just pop you out. I'm gonna pop you out for now. I'm gonna just for a second while you get set up, and then I'll add you back to the live stream in a second. So while Carlos kind of, you know gets himself together there and gets that all figured out that's what a lot of people don't know like when you're in the studio setup and when you're doing things like this you gotta be cabled up you gotta be wired uh the bluetooth is nice and convenient 
But Bluetooth is not good for situations like this. The lag is real. And uh, I can't recommend Bluetooth in situations like this. Uh, that's true, uh, DJ Lunastar. He will be a member, you know, a director on the board, and it's good to have him on. All right, all right Carlos, how are we doing now, bro? Is that a lot better? It is. Now all your right, video and your audio is in sync. Okay, good. But yeah, man, I mean, T-Mobile has really caught up compared to what it used to be. That's for dang sure. I hear a lot of people say good things about T-Mobile in Vegas. I know um, I think you're from the area. Yes, it's 50-50, man. It, it depends where you're at. If you're in the downtown area, more like on the Strip or in the outskirts of the Strip, it's not – you feel the congestion. But mm. if you're like where I'm at right now in Henderson, it's not that bad. You, the congestion okay. is there, but not as bad. So it probably depends on the time of the day and night? Um, It's actually – since this is a pretty much open town 24-7, it's – you could see the congestion pretty much all the time. You'll oh, notice yeah. it. Yeah, that's true. It's see, unlike a place like the CLE in Cleveland, it's busy during events. It's busy, you know, when there's games downtown, uh, see, when the Cavs here. are on or when the Browns are on. I'll show you a T-Mobile speed test right here. Is that an iPhone? Yeah, XS Max. Okay. Okay. Now here's what I will say about the iPhone XS Max. It uses an Intel chip. Oh yeah, if they're you horrible. Were, if you were running a Qualcomm based chip, it would be faster. <laughs> oh yeah, they're horrible. I, I will not deny that. Yeah, they're gonna upgrade the the chips this year, which is gonna be great. They're going back to Qualcomm. It's uh, I think it's only for one generation though, right? Well, then they're gonna they, go they're gonna go five G Intel like the they bought out Intel's five G segment of the business, which is cool. You know, it, Apple will do do the company justice i'm sure they're gonna make some good chips see and that's the speed right now at this hour which is 444 but see that's the thing carlos that's doable. And it's not that bad yeah it's not that yeah. bad there's like if you're getting 23 megabits per second consistently you could do 4k video on that if you wanted to oh yeah uh i know you don't have a 4k display but i'm saying it's possible if you had those type of speeds all the time see and that's verizon right here is it faster or slower faster Wow, that's like three times, four same, times faster. Same, sig same signal, three bars. It's just, you know, it's Spectrum. You know, yeah. Verizon, and actually Verizon does a lot. They really squeeze the most out of their Spectrum. Like, for example, in my area, I see Verizon getting 80, 100, 120 megabits per second. T-Mobile is pretty close. I do sometimes see them peaking over 100. AT and T's freaking fast over here, man. Oh yeah, same here. Oh, two bars. I'm getting 100 megs download, about 40 <laughs> upload, and that's like straight bars. up. I'm I'm on a prepaid AT and T testing, and it's all like I'm getting 160, 150 megabits per second on prepaid. Oh yeah, they're made. AT and T has caught a big time, especially with that band 14. It's all over here, all over Vegas. It's impressive, man. Uh, so that that contract they got with the government to get that first responders network that band 14 it's been a complete godsend because they've kind of neglected the network up until last year and now all of that investing in 2018 and 2019 if if network connectivity oh, yeah, was your only concern like straight up AT&T is what you would recommend but their customer service is just horrible <laughs> horrible bro the worst they oh, man. actually you know what we should call it not customer care we should cause call, call it customer care less yes they just they I don't agree. care bro <laughs> you know they they want to charge you whatever they want to slap fees they want to you know hit you with price increases when you're not looking and then you know put some kind of name on it like administrative fee increase or whatever their bro, their property taxes went up, so they started charging their customers ten dollars more on their. Oh plans. yeah, I saw. I saw it on my bill. I was like, "What the heck? What's going on here? It was supposed <laughs> to be one hundred and twenty a month. Now it's so, uh, one hundred and thirty-four. So how? So when you found out, was it an update from the channel, or you saw it on the bill? I just saw it on the bill. I saw my auto pay. I was like, "What the heck? Why is it? So why it is it changed again? Bucks? Oh, 12. again, because they did it earlier in the year. Yep. And you're you're still gonna ride with them, huh? The only reason why I do is for testing, man. Like, look, this is Verizon 5G right here. 
Oh wow. What are you that running? LG V50? No, this one is uh the Note 10 Plus 5G from Verizon. Okay, got you. Yeah, this was I one see I was a bunch of like, the other day. I see like 1.7 gigs, yeah. 1.5 gigs. Wow, yep, the, that's so fast. I know. Their their uh 5G in the downtown area is actually it's gotten a lot better compared to before. Uh, Cash Games is requesting that Carlos does an AT and T and Sprint test. I would. I don't have the phones with me in my office right now. I left those at the house. <laughs> ne- next well, time I'll got, bring them in. I, I got next them. Time, at the house. Carlos, next time put one phone in each of those chairs, bro, behind you, <laughs> and then just do a speed test with each one. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm telling you, but T-Mobile, man, up, they've Adeka? caught up big time. I can give them credit and losing John. Like I understand that they want to change their business perspective, but hopefully that they still can keep some of the uncarrier moves that T-Mobile's known for. Cause that's all they, all they really got to do is treat their customers well and stay competitive. And they should be fine moving forward because they have the potential to have a better network than Verizon pretty instantly. Oh like yeah. Within a, within a year or two, I could see T-Mobile's network being better than Verizon's if Verizon doesn't have an answer for the spectrum problems. With that 2.5, man, people don't know. That's no game. That's no joke, that 2.5. Why else would why else would T-Mobile be willing to take on $34 billion in debt and then spend $26 billion on the company and then invest another $40 billion in the network? Yeah, exactly. That's like if you do the math on that, we're talking like, 70 80 billion in the course of the next decade and moving forward like deutsche telecom is going to have to come out of pocket on this it's going to it's going to take five to ten years but that is a ton of money and that's a big nature risk there is risk and actually i think at&t is actually feeling it at&t is pulling the reins back on their spending at&t has been doing over 20 billion spent annually they're going back down to like 18 17 they're starting to to reel it back a little bit because you gotta you gotta make money exactly and you can't keep purchasing companies and spending 25 billion annually you're gonna have to eventually say all right we invested the money we've got to temper it down a little bit let's bring it down to like 10 or 15 billion annually and let's make some money yeah i mean that's a it's a lot of debt to take on but that two dollar five though i got the lg v50 for sprint and phoenix that thing's amazing those speeds on that two dollar five are killer what are you seeing about how much i'm seeing anywhere between four to seven hundred megabits per second on two bars but that's that's the thing what if they actually put some spectrum to it exactly that's just on a five on a five megahertz spectrum so if they doubled it tripled it Ooh, or put 20 put, megahertz of it oh that you'll see speeds at least of 1.7 1.8 gigs no problem yeah. which is millimeter wave status and we're yeah. talking sub six gigahertz exactly so if they aggregate it with the millimeter wave Imagine the speeds. You could hit five bananas, gigs. Bro. That's bananas. Uh, I would never expect them to have to aggregate, you know, millimeter wave and 2.5, but it's like good to know that they could. Um, I mean, what application would you need? <laughs> you know, two, three, four, five gigahertz. Hey, man, it's always uh, nice, especially speed. with the autonomous driving cars soon and all that. You're going to need all the speed you can and the leg and the legacy too. The the latency on, on any type of five G is going to be really really low. You know we're going to see like one millisecond. You know that's that's the goal. These autonomous vehicles, these IoT devices. You know that's and that's another thing. Like everybody's all caught up in these download speeds. That's one part of it, man. We need the latency uploads. is going to get low. Yeah, and we bro. You know how many times I'll have a, a video that I want to upload and I'm on the road and I don't have Wi Fi and I'm transferring at two megabits per second. Oh, yeah. It's you, it's going to take you like 35, 40 minutes for that one video. Yes. Yeah. And it's like a five minute video. Yep. And, that, know, and I have no, I have, there's nothing I could do. I'm on the road, right? Yeah. But with that and, AT&T though. <laughs> no, no. They still, yeah. it's, they, it all gets throttled to two megabits per second when I upload to YouTube. Really? I did not know I can that. have, I can have 40 megabits per second did on my upload. Off, did you turn off the data streamer? Because they have a data streamer service that uh, on your my AT&T, you got to turn that off so you get the full 1080. Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, all of them. 
they all throttle uploads whenever it's connecting to a video service. Oh, wow. I was same, not aware same, of that one. Same thing, same thing with download. I think AT&T actually throttles the least. Like, I'm getting four or five megabits per second on fast.com. Wow. That's... And Verizon, I get like two or something, two or three. With T-Mobile, I get 1.5, 1.7. Even though my download speeds are 100 plus megabits per second, my video streaming speed is capped, you know, two, three, four, five megabits per second. So they're basically doing like what Sprint does, where they only give you so much for video. And yeah, they all do it. that. They all do it, Carlos. The only company that I see doesn't do it as aggressively is AT&T. Jesus. Wow, I did so not I, know so that. I, yeah, I can get 1080p easily on my AT&T. With Verizon, it's a struggle. 720p is good. With T-Mobile, sometimes 720p, sometimes 1080p. It kind of depends. Um, it's inconsistent. You know, I can't rely on it to be 1080p. It happens sometimes. But I don't like that. I don't like that wishy-washy, bro. Don't you pay that plus service with T-Mobile to get the 1080p services? I'm not really sure. I'd have to ask Pete. Pete's the guy, uh, you know, Pete that's on the podcast with yeah. me sometimes. It's It's his plan. He just added a line for me to test it. I've liked it so far. But that's one thing I wish that I could change is instead of you know being stuck at 720p for a consistent resolution, I'd love to see a 1080p. Bro, if you, like I said, if you want to test out the 5G, man, out there in the CLE, I'll send you the phone. I got it right here. I'll send it to you. Do some testing there? Yeah, man. Wait, go what, ahead. Wait, that's the Note 10 Plus? This is the Note, yeah, the Note 10 Plus 5G. So did you buy that from Verizon? Um... I got I got some hookups, man. I got some hookups, bro. I get I get stuff on the sweet deals on the low. Okay, low. is it is it unlocked? Like, yes. Can I put other sims in it? Yes, you can. Okay, I, All right. I, I can show you on the cast. It's unlocked. Sweet, bro. Okay. I was gonna That's... test out the T-Mobile 5G here on the strip with this. You phone. guys have it right in yes. Vegas. It's millimeter wave, but nice. It's probably fast. Out. Oh yeah, I bet it is. I just gotta go try it out. I'm good, Jamil. How are you, bro? Good to have you on. Michael's also in the house. Good to have you on as well. Um, to be honest with you, I'm expecting my experience on T-Mobile's millimeter wave to be similar to what you would have in Vegas. Uh, you got to look at the coverage map to see where it is. So, Oh, yeah. It's only in a certain way. couple of spots, like uh, right by the that's, Mandalay Bay, right by the, the Fashion Show Mall. That's millimeter wave, bro. That's yeah. how it is. But, I mean, Verizon is doing pretty good with their millimeter wave in Phoenix. That's for sure. It, it's in the last month. Since, from last month when I was there till now, when I was just there about a week ago, big difference. Now you get it all over downtown, and you're getting it outside of downtown in certain spots. Okay. So they're actually like, whatever they're doing, that's what they need to keep doing if they want to continue with that millimeter. I'm excited to try it. I'm excited to see it. It would be awesome. You know, to get my hands on a device that could support it. Dude. I was actually, I was waiting for, I mean, I should still test it anyways, but I was actually waiting for the December 6th launch of the OnePlus and then the, you know, to have that low and mid band uh, compatibility. Yeah. But the thing is, I also need to see where this 5G is going to be. Well, bro, I can like, come up on the devices all day, every day, man. You let me know. I, I should can... probably, like, if you've got any for sale. Bro, you know, always. I should, I, yeah, I should probably just purchase. I mean, I guess I could always just put it up as a tax write off for the for the channel. Bro, I uh, got you, man. I'll send you one, bro. <laughs> if you want, I'll send you a freaking Note 10 too, man. <laughs> so you dude, can test bro. it out. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Yeah, maybe always, we'll be bro. in we'll be in contact. I'll send you an email after the show and stuff. Yeah, man. Um, anything the sprint. I know you wanted to test sprint out too. I got it. I got extra lines on my plan because it's cheaper to keep it than to cancel it. Then the price goes up. That's What's weird, man. Yeah, that is weird. So, like, when you do the ad lines and all of that, and then you end up just keeping it because you get a better rate plan, right? Yeah, it's way better. If that I is cancel, crazy. If I cancel the three extra lines I was sprint right now that are just sitting ducks, if I cancel them, I'm going to be paying an extra forty dollars a month on the bill. I and I rather save the forty and just have them there. Right. Uh, here's what I'll say about Sprint in the Cleveland area, Carlos. It's bad, bro. It's, that bad. It's a lot of 3G. It's 2019, and I would say there's a tower. Have you seen my video, uh, Speed with Sneed? 
Yes. Okay. That tower, no lie, is less than 800 feet from my from my classroom. And every single set of antennas represents every carrier is there. Yes. AT and T's there. T Mobile's there. Verizon is there, and Sprint's there. And I'm telling you, bro, every Sprint device, iPhone, Android, doesn't matter. They're all in 3G in that in that building. With Verizon, wow. I've got a full signal. With AT and T, it's a full signal. With T Mobile, it's a full signal. AT and T is getting 160 megs per second. Verizon is getting 120. T Mobile is getting 150. Holy and sprints and sprints in 3G, crawling at like 0.3 megabits per second. Kids can't pull up videos. Kids can't pull up pictures. People trying to upload, you know, Instagram photos, they can't do it. Wow, it's all 3G, bro. That's and the crazy. tower's right there. Yeah, when, man. When, when was the last time you tried it, though? I mean, these these kids have these phones every day in my oh, room. Okay, okay. So they have. So you yeah. do have students that have Sprint. Yeah, iPhone XS's. They got all you know these newer right. iPhones, these Androids. They got oh Galaxies. I so I work in a very affluent community. Uh, oh money's God. not a problem. Yeah, it's it's just really sad, bro. Um, I haven't seen 3G on any provider in the Cleveland area in probably three or four years, except on Sprint. So oh. they're ne they're neglecting the upgrades or something or just uh, bad management. You know, all it was it's bad ceo bad leadership bad everything the company has the assets they have more assets than all the carriers put together but carlos and, but is it bad management everybody says the same thing nextel ruined sprint that nextel uh, acquisition back in 2003 four five whatever year it was four i think it was was it four whenever yeah like remember when they did the chirp yeah. chirp they used to have the push the talk yeah. and all that it was nice to have, but bro, you couldn't, you weren't going to be transmitting data over that connection. Heck no. <laughs> and, and you had a separate number, right? For that, uh, like if, if you had like a Nextel phone, what is it? Iden technology was yeah, it? Yeah, IDEN, yeah, Iden. It was the Iden tech and it was like 850 megahertz. It wasn't even and that great for national. It used, yeah, 850 and 1900. Man, they were totally flawed, bro. And, and they couldn't integrate the native sprint with the nextel it was it was giving them a hard time oh yeah it's two it's two different technologies okay, so all together dj luna was, she's corrected us 2004 appreciate that i, I used did to have the, nextel. included that in the, there it was motorola's i remember the chirping and all of that i used to have the i7 i wonder what area jose is in man Hey, Sneed, are you, you having connection problems? You're bro, buffering like, a lot. Like, uh, Carlos is dropping in and out. Uh, yeah, your connection is dropping in and out. It's buffering pretty bad. Hello? Are you there? Okay. What happened here? Yeah, I think I think Sneed's connection dropped. Does anybody on the chat? Yeah, I'm I'm here. You're buffering pretty bad. Are you there, Carlos? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, uh, I wasn't. I'm sure. trying to see if people if they're seeing if I'm buffering with them or. Uh. Uh, let me know if it's still like if I'm okay. Yeah, you keep video side. Keep, uh, I don't see nothing on the video right now. I mean, I'm, it's okay. It's okay if the video is not on there, but is the audio okay? Oh, yeah. Yeah, now it's better. Okay, Boy, so do you the, have a connection. So the audio is good? Yeah. I have no idea. I, I can't really. I can't really tell if it's on my side or what's going on, but it says I'm buffering bad. Is the video okay or is the audio okay for now? Yeah, the audio is good. Who do you? Who's your home provider, bro? I have, like, I have Cox. I don't really have options. This oh, is man. all we really have right now Dude, in this area, so I don't really have choices. 
Oh man, I had Cox too, man. They're horrible. I, I hate them. I canceled. I, I honestly, I just use a little hotspot modem, man. It's cheaper and better speeds. That's what I'm, I can't, that's the problem is I'm supposed to be getting 300 megabits per second on the download and 30 on the upload. And I want the 30 on the upload because that's well, what I use for streaming. You won't get it. Uh, I'm telling you, I used to work for Cox. I used to be an install tech for them four years. You will not get that. It's a shared connection. So if everybody in, uh, let's say your distribution box is two miles away. So if everybody has Cox within the two mile range to that distribution box and they're all signed in at the same time. If you're paying for 300, you're lucky if you get 90. Are you Actually, there? Let's see if this is better. Yeah, I'm here. You got there me. There we go. Yeah. Okay. But, this should but be yeah, better. Cox is a shared connection. That's the, when I used to work there. Trust me. Every there was always always issues. I used to digital cable issues. You know, with the pic, uh, pixelating everything, man. Internet people complaining. I'm paying a hundred at the time when I was working there was a uh, hundred fifty was the highest speed. They're like, we're paying for hundred fifty. How come I'm only I did a speed test and I'm only getting twenty five. I'm like, well, mm. it's a shared connection. I would gladly downgrade to 50 megabits per second download and 10 megabits per second upload if I knew it was going to be consistent. It won't be. Not with Cox. Not well, with I'm, saying, I'm saying, like, take, for example, like, if it's T-Mobile, LTE, if it's some other, I don't mind, but, like, I just need it to be consistent. I don't care about the top end speed. I don't need a, I don't need a gig. I need... This this little thing is my friend right here. This is one of them. What do you pull with that? I'm pulling a hundred. I can pull a hundred on it. But uh, right I now, mean, right upload. now about upload. upload. Um, right now, since I'm here at the office, about twelve to fifteen. That's perfect. That's what yeah. I need, man. That's all I need. I can get 720p upload. You know, then I'm good. You know, like on these types of streams and stuff like that. This this here, they gave me the modem for free, and since I have the old uh, simple choice plan it's only ten dollars for unlimited data that's really good bro the problem is i can't use t-mobile here because t-mobile is not good here well like, verizon uh, verizon is really good here like it's ha- it's impressive I have one on an old plan if you if you need to let me know man i you all you got to do is get the modem and a sim card and give me the sim card number and i'll hook it up man it's only uh what is it 20 bucks a month with verizon on my old plan and it's unlimited <laughs> no no uh no throttling no nothing i'm on the old um nationwide 1400 minute plan but with it's the, got uh, old, unlimited old data school, yeah with the old school unlimited data the non-throttled bro, i'll tell you what bro i'll send you a modem you just install that sim for me and send it back bro and i'll pay you whatever you want dude all you gotta do is just when you just go pick one up the sim card bro i'll send you the sim card i got sim cards for days man I probably have a Verizon SIM card somewhere. Does it matter if it's an old one? No. Well, it, um, as long as it, it wasn't reported lost or stolen. Before, no, uh, no, nothing like that. These are my I, old I got SIM a bunch, cards. bro. Don't worry. <laughs> you know, we got them. <laughs> you straight up pulled it out like you had a stack of money, bro. <laughs> bro, crazy. we got them. Don't worry. <laughs> if you need one, I'll activate one and send it right your way, man. Bro, that'd be sweet, bro. I, I got to get rid of this Cox, bro. It's killing me, man. No, it's horrible. I, I can tell you garbage. that right now from the get-go. I can't believe, bro, in 2019, I'm having this conversation where LTE is more reliable than a cable line, man. And the funny thing is a lot of our service providers use those same lines. It's ridiculous, man. Yeah. Is, I don't know how it works, but that's just the way it is. I don't know. And I'm disappointed. Like, greedy. they came, yeah, and they came and they, like, changed all the hardware outside they gave me some new cables you know they 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 checked everything's great you know they they lie through their teeth bro oh yeah i used to be an installer i'll tell you this this was our thing we couldn't be at your home for more than 30 minutes we had why to you had to get on to the next thing mm-hmm. so if we couldn't find the problem within 20 minutes all we had to do is put a signal amplifier or a signal reducer in the side of your house and call it a day you'll call again and we'll come back out so it's all a game Yep. It's ridiculous, bro. I'm about to cancel this right now, bro. That's how bad it is, man. And their digital cable, oh, don't even get me started on that one. It's 
support. Yeah, I just I I'm I'm so close to a Verizon tower. I'm or it could be AT and T. It doesn't matter to me, bro. Like honestly, Dude. the only one I can't do is T-Mobile because it's not good here in this particular location. I'm getting like two or three megabits per second over here in the house. Yeah, yeah. It, once you get six hundred more six hundred out there, you'll probably it'll probably improve. Yeah, I, and and honestly, if it was ten to twenty megabits per second upload, I would never need anything other than that. Yeah, for I think, I think Verizon. Perfect. I think Verizon out here. Last I checked, it was like thirty to forty upload. This is really good. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, it's really good. I could, I could upload four K, whatever, eight K, probably. That eight K though, man. I saw that new LG TV with that. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I just yeah. upgraded my TV actually, man. But I only went four K. I didn't go eight K, man. No, that's too much. It was uh for a six. It was a seventy-seven inch that I saw, and it was I think sixty-five hundred dollars. Is it one of those curved OLEDs? No, it was LG, but LG. it was, but it was good, man. That's a strange number. It's like I usually I see them like like seventy five. Yeah, uh. LG always does that weird number. Always. <laughs> uh, Bladius, uh, no Verizon FiOS in this area. It's Cox or and Cox does the high speed. You can have AT and T, but they can't give you anything above fifty megabits per second. DSL, right? No, they'll give you um, what is it? Uverse, it's called. Basically, it's kind of like DSL then, kind of in a way. I think they're also doing that splitter where it's like everybody sharing a shared connection. Oh, wow. So if you're if they tell you 50, it might be 50 sometimes. Yeah. It, it might be 20. <laughs> it might be 30. But like I said, I, the download, the only person really using the download is like my daughter when she's running her iPad or the or a Chromecast possibly. Other than okay. that, we're we're all LTE in the house. My my phone, I have three phones, bro. Um, my wife has an unlimited line. Like it's it's not a thing. It's really just it's me with the upload. That's it. It's just for these. Yeah, that's it, bro. I can do the rest of it all over LTE. What's funny is out here we got CenturyLink, and CenturyLink has better speeds than Cox because it's a you go right to a private network you go right connected to but their that's, hub that's but, what cox that's what cox advertises though carlos oh no i know i know that's what they advertise but it's not true though I, I can tell you as an line. as an ex employee <laughs> it's garbage bro i don't like uh, it i'm done Cent <laughs> with century with century link i have better luck <laughs> and century link what what do they charge um what what, what think, are they I giving you was, i think it was like well, I have it here in the office. It's forty-five a month, and it's a uh, hundred download and like ten upload. Twenty-five upload. That's yeah, twenty-five. Good, and it's not bad at all. And it's and it's unlimited. I don't have to worry about one terabyte. And then I guess start getting taxed fifteen a gig. Oh, that's a nightmare, bro. Oh man, you have to pay thirty extra dollars a month just to be unlimited. All right, so what I'm what I'm gonna do because I'm like legit ready to leave Cox. I'm gonna I'll email you right after the stream. We'll talk about yeah. me getting a SIM card. And I getting, got you, bro. Don't worry, man. Because I mean, I can to be to be perfectly honest with you, I'm using like right now. This is a Verizon hotspot that's running this live stream. I was actually doing with Visible for a while back when I was uh, testing the network. You, were you were you a subscriber to the channel when I was reviewing Visible? Oh yeah. Okay, so like when I started reviewing Visible. I, I was getting like 30, 40 megabits per second on visible. And then they started slowing it down to like five on the, uh, on the hotspot. So once they started doing that, I'm like, all right, well, I guess I don't have to waste 25 bucks a month anymore. I don't really need but, the service. I got all these other lines, but visible. It's not bad though. It's a bit, you get a bank for your buck out of them. That's true, bro. And if you get on one of those, uh, one of those party plans <laughs> where yeah. it's like four lines, what is it? 20 or 25 each. Uh, twenty, I think, right? Yeah, something like that, bro. Some. See, this is what this is what I have to carry every day, man. All this, <laughs> the two that are at the house. Bro, testing. I got, I got, I got this. This is uh, I got a One Plus Seven Pro. That's got a T-Mobile line in it. I have an S10 Plus. That's got a AT&T line in it. I have my Nexus 5X because I broke my my Pixel 3 AXL display. 
That's getting oh, fixed. Man. But this has a Verizon line in it. I can't take it anymore, bro. I, I really don't like – like, this is crazy, bro. Watch, watch. Like, like you just showed it, right? Yeah. Bro, who wants to – this is like 10 pounds right here. Oh, in yeah. my pocket, I got to <laughs> put one in the bag. You're buffering again. Hey, Sneed, are you still there? Did it cut it all off or? Oh, wow. Wow, it really kicked them off. Okay, so. Uh, Jamil, I, think, I live in Vegas. I think no, that's. Oh, <laughs> what happened to you, man? Bro, you don't understand. Like, now my computer is trying to pick up. The other one again after I tried to just connect my hotspot. Yeah. So it, it booted, it disconnected me from the stream yard. Bro, first of all, there's two things happening. First of all, Cox sucks, right? That's the first thing. Second yeah, of all, yeah. Second of all, stream yard is another thing in and of itself. It's it's simultaneously casting this with YouTube. And then to make matters worse, now my connection is handing off because it went from my my hotspot to to Cox, and then now it's, I don't know what it's doing. It's it has his own I'm, mind. <laughs> I can't win, bro. Seriously, I've been trying to win. I can't win. <laughs> That's how it is, man. Trust me. Fighting with I this tech. Win, oh my god. What's up, Tech for your needs, man? Good to have you on, bro. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, moving around too much. Upload can handle it. I wonder what I'm getting for speeds, man. Let me see. Actually, you know what? I have an AT and T hotspot too. I should probably test that one of these days. Maybe I'll stream from that this week. Maybe I'll try oh, it on like the. the... Yeah, I want to see if it could do it. You know, I'm I'm curious. Uh, I don't see why not, but you are, but I mean, as a prepaid, I mean, you're lower priority on the tower, bro. But the That's tower, right. the tower blazes. Oh yeah, it's like 160 megs per second. That's good. <laughs> That's I mean, I really do, do you see it having issues? No. I don't see why not, but it depends. I don't know how many people in the CLE have AT and T around you. A lot do, but the 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 network is strong over here, man. Like I had it, I had AT and T about four or five years ago. Yeah, and the only reason I left is because they weren't doing advanced LTE with unlocked phones. Yeah, that was it. So like, I wasn't getting voice over LTE. I wasn't getting HD calling. I wasn't getting Wi Fi calling with my unlocked Nexus devices. So I left. Verizon was, so I stayed with Verizon. And their AT&T's unlocking policy don't even get me started on that one. <laughs> Horrible. They all suck, bro. Honestly, Verizon used to be the best. No, yes. uh, They had no lock. Now they're locking for 60 days. Yeah. Pumps. Now it's 60 days unless you can prove that your military or some, some stupid exceptions that they have. Oh, is, is that what it is? Yeah, and it doesn't even unlock automatically, actually, because... On one of my Verizon lines, I ended up uh, buying an iPhone straight outright, and they wouldn't even unlock it. They made me wait the sixty days. Really? And they, yep. And they, because I didn't get it at the Apple Store, I screwed up. And oh. then afterwards, I called. You know, like I called, set it up, told them I need to unlock. They said no. You have to wait the sixty days. Well, day sixty-five, I tried it, popped in the SIM, and it was still locked. You still have to call Verizon and make sure your account is in good standings that's the only way it will unlock after 60 days you have to call and get it unlocked still but they'll so, do it right away right but even w so you have military status with them military account yes and they still give you a hassle with that yeah unless i unless i provided my uh itinerary that uh, i was going to be deployed overseas then yes then they'll do it right away their their business policies are jacked up bro I think well, Verizon, AT and T, probably the two worst business policies when it comes to customer care. Yes, 
They give you the runaround, bro. They give us they give us a hard time as customers. How does that make sense? Your your customers pay you and you're gonna give them a hard time? Doesn't make any sense. Even T Mobile, my my wife, she has a second phone, the XR. I got that unlocked, no problem. From day one that I got it, I called them and I just give them some lame excuse and they're like, Okay, yeah, we'll unlock it for you, no problem. Which company no, are even you on about? payments, T Mobile. Okay. I'm gonna try to switch off to this. I'm gonna try this ATT hotspot. Let's see if it does it. Let's I'm gonna do try it. it. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. There we go. So far so good. All right, I'm back. All right, let's see. Let's see. let's let's see how this works. So this is AT and T right here. So far stable. <laughs> it's so frustrating, bro. I can't take it anymore. I've been trying to do this. Like, I've been trying. Actually, you know when I was my live streams were the most dependable was when I was running Visible Hotspot. And well, yeah, when I yeah, and then when they said they, you know, fixed all the uh, wiring and all the stuff outside with Cox, I was like, all right, I'll give you guys a shot again. You know, you tell me it's all fixed. Let's see. You know, heck no, man. I could have told you that. No way. They're <laughs> full of it, huh, Carlos? They're full of it, man. That's why I had to quit, man. I couldn't take it no more. I hated not I'm gonna being go able to, to help the customer. I'm going to go to fast.com. I can actually, what's kind of nice about StreamYard is I can share my screen, Carlos. So here's what I could do. I'm going to go Chrome tab, internet to fast.com, and I can share it. Oh, nice. So you see what I'm saying, how AT&T gives 4.3 mega. That's yeah. if you're connected to a video app or a video usage. So if this was my... If this was my um, my Verizon line, it would be like 2.7, 2.5. Which, not bad. From, what, from my experience, can do 720p no problem, but it doesn't do 1080p well. If this oh. was my T-Mobile, it would be like 2. Point, it would be like 2.0, 1.7, 2.3, 2.9. Do something like that. Is it not connecting anymore? Okay, there we go. Uh, there you go. Okay, so. Yeah. Uh, now, if I go to like speedtest.com, like Ookla, this will. Yeah. Let's go to speed test here. Let's just run it here through the. Is it showing right now? Yeah, it is. Yep. This so is a Google that's... test, right? Yeah, this is AT&T. This is a prepaid line. Yeah, and that's not bad at all. That's, re <laughs> that's really good, bro. And then the upload, I don't know, it should be like eight or something. I think I used to see. Oh, wow, so it's streaming with one megabit per second. It's pretty solid. I mean, you buffer but, a little bit, but not, not as bad. Ah, oh, man. See, that's kind of disappointing. Ah. All right. So my goal was to be on here for an hour. We're an hour and a half in. I'm actually going to I'm gonna get off of here for a second. Um, I'm probably going to be back on live streaming Friday. Carlos, if you're available, I'll send you the invite. Oh, you can hop on. Um, Thank you, man. We'll we'll see if there's any other news going on this week. I'll be uploading videos throughout the week, obviously. A uh, couple of videos I got to put out. I got a Band 46 video. I got a Band 48 video. They're on the Patreon. Uh, are you a patron, Carlos? Yes. Okay, so since you are a patron, you have access to all those videos. You can check those out anytime. Uh but for those of you out there that aren't patrons and you want to get access to those videos, they are there. Uh, you can pick. There's three different tiers on the Patreon. A buck, two bucks, three bucks. There's ways to get involved and ways to become a part of the community. And um, what is that, a community? It's like 24 people. It's not a big community, but it's nice. Um, you know, get some exclusive videos out there. It's it's pretty cool. And it's I think what I'm going to do. Cause. Yeah. For a um, good cause. You know what I'm going to start doing, Carlos? I think I'm going to start making the Sunday stream a Discord stream. Like, the live chat will be Discord members, 
and I'll just put it for replay on the YouTube just to make it like an added perk uh, for oh, the wow. patrons. You know what I'm saying? Like, so the YouTube viewers can still watch it. It'll just be live for the patrons. And, you know, YouTube will get it on the replay, that sort of thing. Yeah, that's a good idea. What's up, Ricky Florida Keys? Obed. Carlos, you got a channel? Um, I was thinking about it, man. Like I was telling you yesterday, I was thinking about doing with the reviews of the speed tests and all that stuff. So especially that go. I'm dri I drive everywhere, man. <laughs> bro, you know I you know you got my support, bro. I'm gonna put you on blast in my community tab. Thank I'll you. put you on blast on my Discord. Uh if there's anything, if you decide you want to do it, any advice, any any suggestions, you know, if you want to just help on getting going, I could definitely support you in that, man. You're a, a friend of the channel, a friend of the show, and a and a friend of mine, man. Dude, thank you, man. I appreciate that. And uh, I think what we'll do is we'll kind of close it out there. Big news today. You know, John's stepping down as CEO in April. And uh, we're going to have Mike Sievert at, as the new CEO. And uh, changes are coming with the merger. And, you know, I, I keep my ears to the street, man. I'm always listening. And I, I'll keep you guys updated as the news comes. And we'll make it available to you guys. Let's just hope this merger goes through, man. It, it really needs to happen. We want we want the legitimate competition, man. We don't want Verizon and AT and T resting on their laurels, you know. Because those assets that Sprint has, somebody needs to put them to use. Uh, Carlos, are you on the Discord? Yes. All right. Uh, do you know how to like contact with a direct message? Um, I would think I was doing it with Pete a couple weeks ago. Okay, hit me on a direct message. Let's chat. I want to connect with you on some of that stuff we talked about earlier, and then we'll we'll get it all figured out. All right, let's see here. Let's see if I can figure this out real quick. It's all on right, here. You just hit the little message thing up here, right? Oh, I can even see my avatar. I'm on there. Yeah, I can see my avatar there. Yeah, and then oh, you okay. can do like a direct message that way. All right, let's do some thank yous. Uh, big thank you to Carlos for coming on and hanging out all the way from Vegas. Appreciate you being here, bro. Dude, dude thank you, bro. Let's, uh, let's give a big shout out to all the moderators. Uh, Ricky Florida Keys just popping in. I know I definitely saw a couple other ones. Uh, Pete was here earlier. I also saw uh, Jamil was here for a moment. I'm not sure if there were any other moderators, but thank you guys for holding it down for me. Uh, you know, likes, we got a bunch. We need of, a lot of likes. Yeah, the likes help. You guys want to help the channel grow? You got to like the videos and share them too. Facebook, Twitter, the gram, whatever you use. Discord. Check us out there. There's a link in the description box below. There's also a Patreon link there as well. Uh, my Twitter handle at Sneed Tech. I'm tweeting more now. I used to like never tweet. I tweeted like once a week. Now I'm doing like two tweets a day. Oh wow! Bro, I'm I'm a machine, <laughs> bro. I am tweeting, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I never really got used to the Twitter, but I know everybody's I'm using trying. it now. I'm trying, bro. I'm trying. It's not easy. It's from a guy who's tried to disconnect a little bit over the last few years uh, to help the channel grow. I've tried to engage with Twitter, and I think it seems to be working. Though you know, I'm getting more traffic, and I'm getting more, I'm getting more run. You know, only if we got those likes up, man. That's yeah. Yeah. Well, I'd, I'd appreciate it for everybody out there, whether you're watching this on the live or if you're watching this on replay, please do like the video. Um, other than that, that's it. On behalf of Carlos, the SMT, we'll see you guys on the next video. All right, guys. Peace. Peace.